Hey guys, welcome back to another video. If this is your first time here, I'm Rose and I'm hiking the PCT this year and this is my gear video. So we'll start right off with the pack I plan on using. It's the Waymark Light. I think it is. It's their 50 liter. I got this a couple years ago, so it is frameless. Um, you can fold it right in half. I added a pocket to the shoulder strap and a hip belt pocket here, as well as my Peak Designs. You can kind of see it. Camera clip. I love this pack. I've used it a couple times on a few small backpacking trips and it has everything I need. Enough pocket space. Uh, I love this uh, Lycra, I think, pocket on the outside because it's super stretchy and I can get a ton of stuff in there. And it also has loops on the outside to get my trekking poles or my ice axe attached to and out of the way and secure. Next up is my tent. It is the Big Agnes Tigerwall UL2 tent. I went back and forth on whether I get the UL1 or the UL2, and honestly, the pack weight wasn't much different. So I just went ahead and got the UL2, so I'll have a little bit more space and uh, can stretch out and have the double vestibules. I'm also bringing a, I bought this from Six Moon Designs, it's just a piece of Tyvek. I went back and forth between using the footprint that I have for one of my other tents or just using Tyvek and I decided to use this. This is going to be my first of a couple luxury items, but this is the Sea to Summit Eros Pillow. I need a pillow to sleep. I. I'm not even going to apologize for that. So I bought this. It's not the latest one on the market. It was all REI had a couple years ago and there came a time where I just needed to stop my buying more gear and so I'll be bringing this even though I know it's a little bit heavier. Next up is my sleep pad which is the one that a lot of people carry. It's the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite just in the regular size. I love it. The I forget what the R value is on this but I sweat every single time I go camping with this so I definitely think I'll be plenty warm. I might add the Gossamer Gear 8th inch pad when I get to the Sierras for a little bit extra warmth but for now this will get me through the desert section, no problem. Have it just rolled up with a little elastic around it, just one to have another elastic, but two keep it nice and rolled up there. Next up, this is my sleeping quilt. It is a UGQ quilt. I think it's 750 down and it's a 10 degree quilt, so it is super super warm. I got this a couple years ago and it's what I bring with me camping all the time whether it's in the summer or in the fall and I am plenty warm. I used this when I was in Bryce Canyon a couple years ago and it got down below freezing. I think it was like 25 degrees and I was hot in this. Just kidding. This is 800 fell down. Moving into what I'll be wearing on trail. I have been wearing Ultra Lone Peaks for a couple years now, so I got uh, the newest design to go on sale at REI. These are the Lone Peak 6s, and I just have some Dr. Scholl's running inserts in them instead of just the normal foot inserts, um, just for a little bit extra arch support. And then I will be wearing the Njinji toe liners. I love the lightweight ones because my feet get really hot and these prevent blisters and I know they wear out rather quickly so I'll be replacing these pretty frequently but that is okay. Next up is the shirt I plan to hike in. It is a Patagon Patagonia excuse me, Cool Daily shirt I think it is. It's super lightweight. I haven't used this particular shirt but there is a Patagonia shirt that I'm bringing with me. I've had for years and I absolutely love it. It's like their stuff stands up and I am excited to try that out. Uh, next up is the shorts I'll be hiking in. They're the Patagonia baggies, the five inch shorts. 
I love these because they have the drawstring waist and the pockets. They're really good for swimming too, I found out, for jumping in a lake or a river if I come across them. And then just some underwear, Victoria's Secret, nothing special, and then a sports bra, a Lululemon bra I've had for a while. This is for the ladies out there. I specifically wanted to wear this one because it doesn't have the removable cup pads, so I don't have to worry about those, and this dries out super quickly. Next up, still some stuff that I will be wearing, so I plan on wearing this hat. It's just an L.O. Bean 5 panel. I have the matching Anoric. I always say that wrong, so don't, don't roast me if I did say it wrong again. This is just a lightweight uh, synthetic hat that I haven't hiked in, but it should dry fairly quickly, theoretically, so that's what will be on my head most of the time. If not, the hat, I did get a buff. This one is, it's one of the half buffs for using as a headband or something to put around my neck for a neck gaiter or even to like wipe sweat. It's multi-purpose <laughs> right there. Next up is an L.B. and Beanie that I have been, there's fuzz all over it. I have been hiking in this for the last couple of years. I wear this all winter long, so I felt like I should just bring it instead of getting a lighter weight one. And then finally, uh, just some gloves. These are brand Head. I don't know, I bought them at Costco. They're the tech gloves, so they have the fingers that you can use your phone, and they have grips on them. And they aren't waterproof, so when I get to the Sierras, I might look into getting some waterproof covers. But for right now, I think these will be fine. My hands get really hot when I hike, just like my feet, so I probably won't be wearing gloves very often, but just wanted to have them. Next up is my Puffy. This is the L.L. Bean Permaloft. It's not down, it's synthetic, which I wanted to get so that if it does get wet, it should still hold its insulating properties. It is hooded, which I love, and you can also stow it. So there's, that's the wrong pocket. Here's the stow pocket. So it folds up really nicely. I won't do it all. I guess I will do it all. Folds up into a nice pouch and I can either carabiner it to the outside of my pack like I have before or even use this as a pillow if I decide that I want well when it's colder out I won't be using this as a pillow I'll probably be sleeping in it so we'll see once again multi-purpose next up this bag I'm debating on bringing it it's the pump sack for my thermo rest and honestly, I don't want to blow up my air mattress at the, or my sleep pad at the end of every day. So right now I just have sort of my rain gear in here just so that if it is in my pack and it is wet, it's not totally waterproof, but at least it's water resistant. So this is my rain jacket. It's not the lightest of weight. But this is where the whole, do I continue spending money on really expensive gear or do I use what I have debate came into play. And I bought this a couple years ago. It is a Eastern Mountain Sports brand rain jacket. It does what I need it to do. It has the pit zips. It has pockets. It keeps me warm and it keeps me mostly dry. I picked this up on sale for $20, so if it gets destroyed, I won't be too upset about it. And then finally in this bag, these aren't rain pants, but they are just an additional outer layer. They're more like wind pants. I stole this tip from Jupiter hikes and they're just the body wrappers dance warm-up nylon pants so they're super lightweight and hopefully they'll help keep me warm or just help keep the wind at bay so that's all for cool clothes that I'll likely be wearing throughout the day um, for camp I am bringing my chacos once again not the lightest weight shoes out there but I didn't really feel like buying another pair of shoes or Crocs for this. I just wanted to use what I have. Next up in this stuff sack is all of the clothes that I'll be wearing either in camp, at night, or if it's colder out. So first up I have my mid layer. 
This is a pullover um, from a brand called Fayette Chill. This is their Livingston style. It's the men's style. The equivalent to women's is the Leah. Um, I really wanted this color and it was on sale and they didn't have my size in the Leah so I just got the Livingston plus I like the fit of men's clothing better. It has the front pocket and a cinch right here and then it is sort of a micro grid material. It's very similar to Melanzana's only the Melly's the grid is on the outside and this is just on the inside. I've worn this on a couple winter hikes so far and it is so warm. Like I summited in this and not my puffy. I had to take my puffy off because I was so hot. So that is a mid layer I'm bringing. Not the lightest of weight, but I think it's worth it. Next up, extra pair of hiking socks. A pair of socks that I will only be wearing at night in camp. Just a pair of Darn Tufts that my brother actually got for me, so shout out to him. Next up, this is, oh, this shirt. This is my Patagonia I was talking about earlier. This is their Capiline Midweight Thermal, I think. They don't make this shirt anymore, and I'm really sad about it. I bought this when I went to Iceland like seven years ago now, and it's what I typically hike in when it's colder out. I'm going between this because I need a base layer and the... A uh, cool daily long sleeve that I have by Patagonia. I've never used that one, but it doesn't feel as warm. But it is in the lighter gray, so it'll be better as like a sun shirt. So that's why I'm kind of going back and forth between this. But I think I'm going to bring this shirt. It's my tried and true, and I know it's gear that will work. And then my camera died, so I'm sorry if the angle or the lighting is different, but I think where I was at was one of the last things in my clothing bag for sleep slash camp is just a pair of leggings. They're by a brand called Camo Fitness, I think it is. They were cheap, and I've heard really good reviews about them. So they're just a pair of athletic material leggings. And then finally couple extra pairs of underwear. All right. Everything else is in no particular order, so we're just gonna roll with it. I have my trekking poles. I am typically a monopole kind of gal, so not sure if I'm gonna bring both. Might bring both to start out and then bump forward um, one of them to the Sierras, but yeah, these are just the Eastern Mountain Sport approach. They're aluminum. I don't know. This is a gift from uh, my friend Kat. So huge shout out to Kat. This was very unexpected. It was a birthday gift and that is something that I don't have to worry about. They seem really good. I've used them a couple times snowshoeing and I really like them. So they have the cork handle and the leash and then I'll probably just wrap some Luco tape and some duct tape around the poles to have that. Next up is my food bag, which is just a Hilltop, Hilltop Packs Dyneema bag. So in here I have my Sea to Summit spork, long handle spork for those uh, mountain house meals. I have my Tokes, I think this is 750 milliliter cook pot. And then inside just the a BRS backpacking. Oh, and my lighter. Um, backpacking stove. It's super tiny and it's stuck in its little bag, but I have been using this for years and I absolutely love it. I've had no problems with boiling water or a couple of people have in the reviews said that uh, their cook pot has fallen off but of it while boiling water, but I've had no issues with that. And then, oh, I forgot I threw these in here. I was at Walmart the other day and I saw that they have the noon tablets and they are way cheaper than anywhere else I've seen them. So we'll be bringing those on the plane with me. Next up is my sort of water filtration system plus this. This is just a microfiber towel that I got in a gift bag for a charity swim that I did a few years ago. I figured I would bring it, I might cut it in half just so that I have something for when I go into towns and I stay at like hostels or use um, showers where I won't get a towel, but also it'll be something to clean my cook pot with or once again, wipe away any type of sweat. Then I have this Cenoc 
I have not seen a single person actually know how to pronounce this. Two liter bladder, just for filtration purposes. I plan on doing the life water thing that everyone else does, um, but I figured this might just be easier if I need to do a bigger water carry or if I just wanna filter water and not have a dirty and a clean bottle. Next up is my Sawyer Squeeze, and I modified it a little bit. Um, this is just a sport cap that I stole off of a old life water water bottle, so I have it on top if I decide to not use the other bladder and just drink straight from the bottle with this. And then right now, I'm going to trim this down, but I just ordered some extra O-rings because I know that the Sawyer's typically will lose their o-ring and then just everything is in this mesh bag to keep it all together. Oops. Next up I have my Garmin InReach which I will be carrying. This is one of the bigger, is the bigger size. There you can see the map right on the screen. This was a gift from my family when I started hiking so if I would do things differently I would probably just have the small one and then pull the map up on my phone like I typically do. Which that leads me into my electronics and it has my anchor battery in here. I forget what the milliamps are. It's like the 286,000 or whatever. It's big, it's heavy, it's got a lot of charging ports but I'm going to have a lot of things to charge. I'll have my Garmin, I'll have my Nikkor ultralight, I forget the actual name of it, headlamp that I will need to charge. This is a rechargeable one. I also will have my camera, which I'm filming on, and my phone to charge. So I think that's everything that would need to be charged. With the Anchor, I bought this separate wall block that has the, um, the quick charge port and then a couple of just regular charge ports so I can charge everything up while I'm in town. This bag right now just has an extra camera battery, some cords for charging, and then my headphones. I will be bringing corded headphones because it's one less thing I have to charge and one less thing I have to worry about sort of wrecking. And then in here right now I just have an unopened memory card. And then this is my memory card case. It's waterproof, but it's really heavy, so I'm looking into other options before taking that out on trail with me. So that's pretty much everything I have for electronics. Next up is I will be bringing a tripod. This just has a phone attachment on it right now, but it does unscrew, so I can just very easily put either my camera or my phone on there. Or something, which is my second luxury item, that I hope people won't grill me for, but I am bringing a second camera. This is a Pentax K1000 film camera. I have recently gotten back into film photography to the point where I'm looking into kind of building out my own darkroom to start developing my own film, and I just really want to capture this trail in a different way. I will be taking digital pictures, but I still do want to have film with me. So I am bringing this. It has just a lens cap and a 50 millimeter fixed lens. I don't have one that's going to zoom in, zoom out. So I will be bringing film with me. That's another thing that I haven't gotten in order. So that can also go on my tripod. Next up is my second ditty bag which has just sort of medications and random items in here. So some sunscreen for the desert sun. This is lens cleaning wipes, uh, alcohol wipes, band-aids, all sorts of stuff, tent repair in there. Um, in here I have extra strength Tylenol. I will not be drinking coffee on trail and I've been a three cup a day girl for six years so I'm expecting some withdrawal, some headaches, some Imodium just in case, and then a whole bottle, I know this is not ultralight of me, whole bottle of uh, seasonal allergy medicine because I get really bad seasonal allergies. This is kind of feminine care and hair ties and safety pins for lancing blisters, uh, toenail clippers, just gotta have them, 
hairbrush because my hair gets very tangled and turns into a rat's nest if I don't brush it every night and every morning. Controversial uh, full-size tube of toothpaste because this whole tube should last me the entire trail and it will be cheaper to have this than to keep purchasing smaller tubes as I go through trail towns. So that's that. And then this is probably the most ultralight thing of me, but Crest now has uh, reusable toothbrush sticks or whatever you want to call them, arms, and you can get replacement toothbrush heads. So I didn't have to saw anything off, but this is my little mini toothbrush. I told myself I was never going to be this person, but here I am and it's just in my little travel toothbrush protector. And then chapstick. All important chapstick. Next up is I am going to be wearing a fanny pack on trail as well. I started doing this when I was finishing my New Hampshire 48 and I love it because I can keep everything that I need like snack wise or just the high use items that I'll need throughout the day in my fanny pack. Right now I have my knife that I'll be bringing clipped on um, to my fanny pack just so I won't lose it but that will likely just be clipped to my pocket of my shorts. And then in my fanny pack, I plan on carrying just my wallet. Right now, this has my permit inside and a Visa gift card to use wherever. Thank you to my cousin for the, that as a Christmas gift. And this is a flow fold, super lightweight. Then right now, I have a bottle of hand sanitizer and then this soft uh, sunglasses case, which right now has my sunglasses in it with one of the neck things on there so I won't lose them, but I will be bringing my reading glasses. I don't need glasses necessarily for distance, but I do need them for reading, so if I am editing videos on my phone, I do want to be able to see, so right now those glasses are in my work bag and they're going to stay there because otherwise I will forget them and I need them for work tomorrow. Next up, bear spray. I'm bringing it for bears, for the people, for protection, whatever you want to say about it, um, so this will be coming with me. Micro spikes, I said in my last video, I plan on bringing these from the get just to be on the safe side. I don't mind the extra weight. They will be coming with me and I will likely keep them in this bag because hearing that noise constantly will drive me crazy. I know it will. I'm sensitive to repetitive constant sounds. So hearing that following me is just going to annoy me so much. Next up, I have to get everything in order for toiletry or bathroom bag or whatever, but right now I just have the Juice of Spades too in green, my favorite color. Um, that was another gift from my friend Liv, so shout out to her. Cat holes, I'm gonna think of you. And then finally, uh, this is something I've never used but I want to try it out because it is so lightweight, but I am going to bring a sit pad with me. I got this one off Amazon for super cheap. It's lightweight. It has an attached little thing right there to wrap it up, and that will just be on the outside of my pack or the top of my pack. So that's all of the main gear, and I will quickly now go through all of my Sierra gear, gear. So there is some gear that I plan to switch out or substitute in for when I go through the Sierras, whenever that may be, if it even happens. So the first one being the all-important Ice Axe. This is a Petzl. I'm not entirely sure which Petzl it is, but um, Ice Axe with leash on it. I'll be using this to go over passes. Next up, um, per requirement of national parks, I will be traveling through. Uh, this is my bear canister. I bought this one from REI. I kind of wish I got the one size down because when I did get this, I saw that if you order it straight from Bear Vault, they have a size down. I'm okay with that because there might be longer stretches where I will need bigger food carries. Bear canister, lots of extra weight, but it is what it is. Next up is I will be adding in an extra thermal layer. So another pair of leggings. These are super lightweight. I'm not, I don't plan on hiking in them because they are sort of cottony material, so they will hold moisture. But these are the 32 degree heat thermals. I have the matching top too. I bought these from Costco and I can't speak 
high enough about them. They are so, so warm. I wear them in the winter to bed sometimes, hiking in the winter. So I love them and I'm going to be trying these out in the Sierras. Next up is I will be continuing to use Gingy toe socks. Um, these are just the mid midweight crew, um, so a little bit higher on the ankle. I might get the ones that are even higher than this because sometimes there is a gap that is between the bottom of my leggings and the top of my sock. We'll be bringing these. And then finally, the next thing I'll be switching out when I go to the Sierras are my shoes. So these are still ultra lone peaks. I, I just love my lone peaks, but these are the high tops. I didn't get the all weather, so I'm sort of regretting that because I have a feeling my feet are going to be rather wet and rather cold in the Sierras this year. So I might look into buying a pair of sealskin uh, socks just to have something dry and warm to put on my feet in the morning if these are still soaking wet from the day before. And this is what I've been doing my winter hikes in this year and having the extra ankle support has been so great. So really excited about these. But yeah, that's that's everything. That is all of my gear. I feel like I'm forgetting things. I feel like I'm overpacking. It's a weird combination of things. All of this will be up on my lighter I'm going to make a lighter gear account. It'll be up on there, or if not, I do have it all in a spreadsheet, and I have all of the prices of breakdown of what it will cost, or what the whole kit costs. Um, so that will be in the description. So thanks for watching. Um, thanks for sitting through that. It was a really long video. I tried not to go too far in depth, but if you have any questions, as always, leave a comment um, or reach out on Instagram or something. So see you in the next one.